All right, ladies and gentlemen, Jared Goldsmith is a Canadian small business community builder and is the embodiment of the small business spirit. He's one of Ottawa's best known entrepreneurs and founded Sax Appeal, Canada's premier saxophone ensemble, Sax Appeal Productions, an agency for all live music needs, eSax, we all know, the Entrepreneur Social Advantage Experience, Ottawa's largest entrepreneur networking community for small business, Exclusive Experience, which Jared will get into that in a little bit, and hosts both Ask the Fedora, which is a YouTube video series on entrepreneur networking, and the ESACS podcast series. Jared, what's up, my man? Hey, Mitch, thanks so much for having me today. It's a pleasure. Well, happy to have you. So the first thing I want to get into, Jared, is ESACS. It's, you have such a cool story. You have a, a saxophone ensemble, and everything just kind of snowballed from that. So you can take yes. us from the beginning, right from, you know, who is Jared? Sure, Mitch. Well, you know what? I never wanted to be an entrepreneur. It was always something that I, you know, entrepreneurs, they're risk takers, and I didn't want to know from that. I moved to Ottawa for two reasons. I tried to get a government job, like most people, most sane people, a steady permanent government job. And also I met a woman and we tried to make it go here in Ottawa. And after years of working on a contract, let's say in one department in some opportunity for three or six months, I was let go. Oh, you're the last guy hired, the first guy fired. We'd love to keep you, but our hands are tied. And in between the seven or eight years that I've been trying to find a permanent day job in the government and advance, it was interspersed by periods of EI. And I was never able to take my government job for granted. But all this time, I kept up the music. I started playing saxophone in high school, and I just loved it. And I, but I never wanted to go into music as a career. I've been listening to my family, my friends, and everything over the years saying, you know, get a real job. Yes, you can play your music on the side, and most artists have, you know, they, they hustle. They hustle on the side to have a day job to pay the bills. But it's really mm -hmm. difficult to go into music. And I listened to them. I never wanted to go into music until uh, 2011. My last government job ended in May 2011. And the day before the government job ended, I was walking down Spark Street and Bank. and there was an employment, auto, um, employment Ontario agency there. And I walked in and I sat down with the counselor and I said, look, my, my contract is ending tomorrow. I'm kind of done with government. I, I've been trying it for seven or eight years. It was never, it was hard for me to get permanent. It was always contract. And the person said, well, there's, there's a, a program sponsored by the provincial government that you might be eligible for. It's to help you treat your passion, your hobby, as a full-time business. It's a 42-week program. They give you a month's worth of classroom training, but the best part is they encourage you to sell your product or service and you keep all the money. And when your EI runs out during that time, they extend your payments up to the 42 weeks. It seemed like the most amazing well, program no ever. It was, it was incredible. And I got in and I started that program in September 2011 and it changed my life. Mitch, I'll tell you, I for months and months and months, Every time I'd go into these classes or talk about entrepreneurship, I, I got the shakes. I, I knew that this is what I wanted to do for my life, go into music. And this so was cool. the opportunity to give me the chance to do it. But, this, but the scary part was, after the 42 weeks are over, you know, the program's over. They had networking events about once a month. But other than that, there was almost no resources to help the small businesses and startups through this program. And, well, let me back up a little bit. The band, the, the business that I started was called Sax Appeal. And have you ever played music yourself, Mitch? I have, absolutely, yeah. my whole life. Oh, very cool. I'm looking forward to getting into it more later. But most people have never heard of an all-saxophone band before. I was one of them. Right. Like, come again? It's five sax? Well, three, four, three, four, two, five. Like, most, most of the time we're four or sometimes two, depending okay. on the event or the budget. But I thought, as a career, how am I going to go into music, let alone a band like this that nobody's ever heard of, how am I going to get gigs for this? And I started going to networking events, a lot of networking events back in 2011 to literally create a market. I mean, you're having a conference, a cocktail reception, a wedding, you're going to, if you need background music, you're going to hire like maybe a jazz quartet, a sax, piano, guitar, drums, maybe. Sure. 
or a string quartet for a wedding, but all saxophones, it's, it's almost unheard of. But that's what I wanted to do. I don't teach music and I don't write music. And I thought, so my options are a bit more limited than, than most, but I was also becoming very efficient at the marketing side, the networking side. And while I was in this program, everybody around me was also startups. You know, many times they'd never started a business their first time. And every three months they took in a new intake. So a brand new group of 30, 40, 50 people starting a business for the first time and they're told to go network. But because I said there was no resources, I started these small events back in late uh, 2011, early 2012, bringing together these startups, these small businesses. And I called it the OSEP, which the program is called the Ontario Self-Employment Benefits Program. Right, right. OSEP. Yeah. And it's been, you heard of it before? Yeah, now I'm familiar with OSEP for sure. Very cool. I, it was around, it's been around 27 years. It doesn't exist anymore, but it changed my life. And so I started this networking group for people in OSEB every three months to bring in the new group of people and as well as network with the older intakes to help people learn networking and practice and, and connect with the others in the community. And that's why my big ESAX trade shows were every three months because it coincided with a new group of this intake of these OSEB programs. Oh, right, right. So, but it all started to get gigs for the band. And then when I started changing the name for, you know, what do I call these little networking events? And at the time, Mitch, we only had 15, 20 people. It wasn't very big. But they started growing. And I thought, okay, I'm going to ESAX. That's pretty cool. It's kind of cute. Sax appeal, ESAX. And I thought, okay, let's see what happens with this. And at first, there was very little fanfare. People didn't care. They didn't know about ESAX. It was just another, another event out there. But I changed the venue. Um, we were at uh, um, the first one was at actually it was the heart and crown in the market and then we outgrew that then we went to Maxwell's which was on Elgin Street and they've since closed yeah. we took up the entire upstairs then in I think it was October 2013 we went to Lago at uh, Dow's Lake and we had almost 280 people there and I thought wow okay now I'm on to something and then I realized that um, oh sorry about that are we still there? <laughs> Fusion. All right. Okay, buddy. I, and, um, and I realized that I was onto something. And then we went to Fun Haven for a couple of years. They had a big room in the back. It's since been taken over as a, as a, a roller coaster, in the, as an amusement park. And then we went to the Lansdowne Park at the Horticulture Building. We've been there since about 2015, I think. And we haven't looked back. And now we frequently get two to 400 entrepreneurs, business leaders, community professionals come out and network. So it's, uh, it's been quite a ride. That is crazy. And so the events are still happening at, at the at Lansdowne? Well, our, our one in January 2020 was the last big one for a while. Okay. We're still continuing with the social media and all the podcasts, the videos, all the great stuff we're doing on the side is, is to help encourage entrepreneurs, but we won't be hosting these big trade shows every quarter going forward. Okay. Maybe they'll be once a year, right. possibly. But something I helped fill the void was last, uh, in August 2019, I launched this exclusive event for more senior level executives and community leaders, and it's called Exclusive Experience. And that's exactly what it is in all regards. But it's a very different demographic than ESACs was. Like, I noticed, as, yeah. Yeah, you probably remember, Mitch, like ESAC, we fill a room for the small business. My band performs background jazz music. It's more social. That's what the letter S stands for, social. Right. And that was the purpose of it. If the market was small business, fill a room full of them, great. These exclusive events, they're up to 15 people, a much higher price point in a fancy location around the city. We rotate the, the, the venues and it, it targets a very different demographic, more of the, like I said, the senior level executives, more like executive one-on-one -on -one networking. I love it. You know, that's, a, that's a thing. I networking, I, I used to go out all the time, but you, you know, you run into the same people and whatnot. And, you know, there's you know, a lot of free events. And so I've always found that that a little bit harder to connect with the people that, that I can truly help. And they happen to be more executive type people. So yeah, I'm, I was totally thrilled to see when you launched that. Oh, thanks, but man. I mean, more there's nothing wrong with free events. More intimate, I would say too. And the yes. you move it around. I like that. Yeah, it's, it's a really cool model, and, and everything I've learned over the years seemed to be that this is the need for, you know, everybody's target market is different. Not everybody's going to find value in going into a room full of small business. Sure. Although if your market is small business, you want to be there. But these events, you know, it's, 
It's for people who really want to leverage the power of relationships. To me, that's what networking is all about. Like, you've been to a lot of events. You've probably had it happen to you, Mitch. People throw a business card at you and they expect you to get signed a deal right away. And I realized years and years ago that that was really not the purpose of networking. It should always be about the long-term initiative, how you can help them in the future. Maybe they'll keep you in mind or refer you to other people. And in the eventuality, they or somebody they know might need your services or products. And to me, I, I was in a, in a unique position when I started the band back in 2011, which I didn't realize at the time, that everybody I was meeting, probably 99% of the people were not hosting a large trade show or event or getting married too often but they might keep me in mind for the music. And then when I got the hat, you know, and I really started this whole branding train, which is what, what I'm known for, right? The East Axe and then all the, the branches that come with that. People started recognizing me as either that networking guy who plays music or that musician guy with the sax something who hosts networking events. The guy with the hat. Oh, it's the guy with the hat. Yeah, actually, a funny story. At, at, at the January uh, 2020 exclusive event, our guest was Michael Curran, and he's the president and CEO of, uh, of Ottawa Business Journal and Great River Media. He says, Jared, I have to tell you a story. Hey, sure, Michael, what's going on? He says, a couple of days ago, I was seeing my chiropractor, and he said, hey, you know, I'm going to this event. Uh, it's like a networking thing called the exclusive experience. The chiropractor said, no, I never heard of it. And then, and then Mike says, oh, the guy with the hat. And the guy the chiropractor says, oh, Jared? <laughs> and Michael Curran was blown away and he said that really is the power of, of branding you bet Something I've been very very focused on you bet that's amazing you know when you mentioned business cards it's funny when I go to networking events people hand me their business cards and I do collect them and I keep them in my pocket when I get home they actually make it on a little stack on my desk yeah and a day or two will go by and I'll take a look at those cards and as of about two years ago, the thing that runs through my mind when I'm going through them is, you know, how much impact did they leave, right? And so you can be really quick to the gun and, and say like, here's my card if you need anything, but man, a relationship is huge. It's, oh yeah. You know, you have the relationship, people do business with people, right? And this is what I've always said. It's not yeah. business does business with business, right? So we're people too. Relationships, they go a long way. So. When I go really through the card and I'm like, I remember this person. Well, then they make it in the other stack. So, yeah. The I mean, what do you do with the business cards afterwards? You know, all these questions like, how do you give a proper business card? When's the appropriate time to follow up? How do you remember people? I, I think we mentioned Mitch, but I have hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel under ESAX with an A, E S A X. And many of them are to help people learn entrepreneurship skills, especially those who are new to networking or are told, you, know, you need to go bring sales or you're starting up a business, you don't have any clients yet, go network. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the free events. We all have to go to them. But, but I say, if you're really serious, find out who, what your demographic is. Find out what events they go to. If, you, if your market is, let's say, government officials or, oh, I don't know, um, social media experts, do they go to the small business, like the free events? Probably not. They go to paid events. So figure out what, what events would be a good ROI for you. And you're going to meet a different type of demographic. Those who see value maybe spending 50 or $100 at an event versus the freebies. Yeah, 100%. And I see you at all the events, right? And I go out to a couple here and there just to show my face, say hi. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's some great people that go to these events. I don't care what stage of business you're in. There's some fantastic people. And I like going to connect with them but you're always there, man. Oh, thanks. <laughs> always there. It's like, Jared, my man's here. Well, well you know, Mitch, when I first started, I, have you ever heard of um, meetup.com? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't know much about networking, and I used that as my main resource, as well as Eventbrite at the time, to find out what other events are going, or even through Facebook. And I would go to everything. Back then, I would probably go to 15, 20 events every week. Right. I would go through my schedule and it's okay from two to four I'm at this event and five to six I'm at this event and nine to ten I'm at this event bang 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 across the city so I don't have to keep driving back and forth I live up in Orleans I love the area but yeah. I'm not going to go down to Canada come back to Orleans and go to Nepean again so I, I make sure that I plan out my route and it took me a long time to realize who my market was and that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm so known now because I did go to everything and I learned some valuable lessons one is you don't need to go to everything 
figure out who your market is. So I talk from experience in a lot of these videos and, and when I give workshops. Two, be strategic. Find out who's going to be at the event if you can and say, okay, I have to talk to this person. You're making it measurable. Measurable results is very important rather than just going for the sake of going. Like if I knew, you know, what they say, if I knew now what I knew then, it'd be very different. Probably still keep the hat though. Yeah, being objective focused, going into it with an outcome in mind, right? What do I want to yeah. get from this? I'm not going to just drive to Canada to grab a sandwich and a coffee, right? Absolutely, yeah. And, and those are monthly, but I'm still playing the music where these days I'm trying to keep booking music, but it's hard because people aren't hiring. And the entertainment industry in particular, you know, it's, the hospitality. It's tough, getting, right? The artists are getting hit really yeah, so hard. The exclusive experience is monthly. It's held monthly. Yes, that's right. That's yeah, awesome. the second Wednesday of every month. How can people register to uh, this particular event? Oh, they go to esax.ca, and yeah. on the main homepage, there's three options. One is uh, learn about networking skills. On the on the here, can you see that? Yeah, wonderful. Esax. All right, cool. YouTube. There we go. YouTube. Um, the second is buy a pair of funky esocks. Support three charities. Yeah, those and are we can talk about that in a sec. And the third is sign up for exclusive experience. And there's little promo videos. There's details about it. And we also raise funds for the Ottawa Network for Education every time somebody purchases a ticket to these events. Fantastic. I mean, Man, having a community really engagement good. is really important for any business. You bet. You bet. Now, this, this is like a, a, a sure sign of leadership right here. Like, I'm looking at him. You also oh, okay. ran for the municipal <laughs> elections. Now I'm not looking at your painting. You ran for like you were in the municipal elections and you promoted. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you're getting 400 people together. I mean, in my opinion, that is the definition of leadership. There. Oh, thanks, man. You, you know what? It's it's so easy to take things for granted and let other people run it. But if you really want to see change, there's nothing stopping you from taking initiative and doing it yourself. You know, nobody's forcing me to to go out to an event, to post things on social media, to organize an event. I'm doing things what I think are right and, and makes the community better. So when I ran for city council in the October 2018 election here in Orleans, I, I, you know, I, I love the community, I love what I do for entrepreneurship, but there's always more we can do. And you bring up an interesting point, you know, talking about the election, people say, you know, why do you want to run? Or I used to get that a lot. Right. And I would say, okay, well, you know what East Axe is? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I bring together entrepreneurs, small business owners, bringing all of Ottawa together. But I wanted to do more for, to say, the non-entrepreneurs, the regular community members, the people in the area, to really help them live their lives better. And this is, this is my way of giving back. I, I didn't win, but it was a fabulous experience to go through that. And, uh, are you uh, planning <laughs> on running again? Is that something? Uh, no, not right no. now. I mean, I, actually, a lot of my experience has been, well, you know, in business, it's about marketing. My slogan was go for Goldsmith. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was kind of cute. But um, all of my business cards, my posters, my, all my social media, there was no date. Was, it's what I called evergreen. If I were to run again, which right, at this point I don't think I will, but I could reuse a lot of that stuff. You know, how sometimes you see politicians with the dates, you know, vote 2019 or, and I thought that's a little short-sighted. If you want to run again, you're going to have to get all new posters and all new lawn signs and it's much more bigger expense. I love it. I love it. You like cost savings if we don't put the date. Yeah. Like, because, oh. and, and a lot of my videos, Mitch, you probably see, you know, I, I, like I said, I have hundreds and hundreds of videos on YouTube. When I post one, it looks brand new because there's no date on them. And this is what I love talking about is when you, when you post a video to position yourself as an expert in your industry, which is what we all want to do as entrepreneurs, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You don't want to put a date so that you could use it across your various platforms on different times and different you know, locations. Yeah, so it looks like a brand new video. I, I, I love that. And for certain industries though, man, I want to see the date. Like it's an absolute... Oh. And in my industry, it's it's the marketing industry and it's search engine optimization or it's Facebook ads and things like that. It, it changes so quickly and people may Google something, right? Like how mm -hmm. do I run a particular campaign? Like people want to DIY it and they're, they're gonna find an article that's four years old and they're gonna completely like ruin that campaign and waste money and things like that. So for, for certain things like that, researching, I think the date's important. But oh, sure. 
your approach is fantastic there. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, every time you, you post a video or uh, whatever on any platform, you know, it has today's date on it, or I think you could choose the date post if you wish. On. Yeah. And that's great. As long as you're coming up with more content on a regular basis to keep yeah. it fresh and exciting. And I used to get yeah, something like 600 videos. I mean, that's, that's two years worth of video. Oh, it's, it's insane. Like how much we have. I have about a hundred videos on the Sax Appeal Ottawa YouTube channel. You know, I mean, I, I, the reason I, I learned this, Mitch, was when I started the band, people would say, you know, where can I see you perform? Well, the specialty of the Sax Appeal band, it's, it's mostly private events, unless we do a public performance at a festival or, or you know, a conference or something. But most people can't go see us live. So I started learning the value of the business, uh, of the social media, and especially videos. So, oh, here's, here's, you're interested in jazz music? Well, here's a playlist of all jazz music. Here's classical music. Here's Christmas music. Here's Star Wars. Like, we have so much stuff. And then when I started ESACs, I thought that looking to appear more successful online, and I'm sure you deal with all the, with many of your clients, is you want to be the go-to source for your specialty, for your industry. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And that takes building content. Yeah, you bet. And you are killing it. <laughs> There's a lot of video making, but I mean, you have to be natural. A lot of people hate video. Oh, the head. I mean, I'm not a very technical person, Mitch. A lot of the times, like over the years, the community is a big part of what ESACs is. We have a lot of stakeholders and almost all of them are donating their services and products to keep this community organization going. So many of the videos were done by different videographers or pictures, for instance, but I have processes in place that, oh, you know, thanks so much for getting involved with, say, uh, filming at ESACs. Here's the document to keep all of the branding consistent. You know, for anywhere from... Yeah, you have a um, design guide. Yeah, yeah, brand guide. Yeah, yeah. So uh, no, you probably... Amazing. But I, I want to touch on this because just before the video, um, Jared was telling me that he's using his cell phone and no external mic. And the quality is just, it's better than mine. And here I am, I set up a backdrop. I have softbox lights. I have my, you know, like my, my whole audio mixer here. <laughs> it's, you don't need to put all that time and energy. I do it just because I have a room and I, I like I, I do other videos in here, but yeah. you know, you can put content out just instantly and people are doing it in their cars and whatnot. They're not driving. Don't worry. That. Yeah, right, right. Hopefully. <laughs> They're powered taking the video in the car or they may have it mounted or something and people are doing these videos on their walk. It really is easy to get content out there and I suggest people do it and like have an objective in mind also. That's really important. And throwing stuff out there just for the sake of it, without a purpose, it is kind of, it's going to get lost in the wind. But creating, let's say, like marketing campaigns on specific topics or covering, having different guests come out like on my podcast we have about 100 episodes on the esats podcast and i'd love to invite you out one of these days mitch let's do it yeah and it's on itunes it's on the website yeah, but it's just more resources that people could can listen to and it's the same thing with all these videos it was more like a public service announcement for me i don't monetize on youtube even though i'm trying to push people to to sign up and register or subscribe to the channels it doesn't bring me any money but it does add more credibility to what you're doing absolutely credibility influence reputation all that good stuff right right you yeah. got to get out there yeah. and i mean in the uh you know we're going through some stuff right now and everyone's staying at home and and whatnot right. but you happen to be just like to launch uh well exclusive experience is an in-person thing yeah is that right i mean the next one is 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 uh middle of april i'm thinking at this point our, our guest is the executive director of Startup Canada. She said to me a couple of days ago, are we still on? Well, because at least at this time, kids might be going back to school in early, in early April. Things might start getting back to normal again. So right now we're still planning on going ahead with the April 8 event. But okay. it's possible it might be remote. I don't know at this point. Right now we've heard, like, I mean, I've seen it and we've heard about it, but a lot of people are just transitioning their events or live events online. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's just something that, you know, life has to go on. But my opinion with this whole, this whole crisis pandemic thing, whatever you want to call it, though, is that we're going to start seeing a surge online. And we're going to see yeah. people transitioning and being creative and sort of just saying, you know what, it's now's the time to do it and to move online. Now, yesterday I was speaking to Kenzel Tracy, 
Mm -hmm. um, who who noted that you know I mean the internet too that was built on a pretty fragile foundation, and so something else is going to crash eventually, right? But I think that we're going to see a surge there to online, whether it's events and new apps or whatever will be developed to to host these online events. It's uh, kind of the way to go, you know. It's either that or a baby boom in nine months from now, but we'll see. The, uh, what was it? I saw a quick meme and it was like the coronials. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. But you know what? Like, I was talking to somebody the other day about this, Mitch, that much of what I've been doing is exactly this day to day. I'm on social media, you know, I'm doing things behind the scenes to build a business. And now that a lot of people or almost everybody is at home, they're realizing how do they deal with everything? I posted a video a couple of days ago about how people can continue growing their business during these, these, this pandemic. And a lot of it is about business planning, you know, working on behind the scenes. But for those entrepreneurs who, for the most part, work from home, this is just another day. Although it might feel like a Sunday. <laughs> you know, the phone's not ringing so much. You're not going to events. You know, make a pot of coffee, work on your stuff, and, you know, keep building your business and hope for, uh, you know, things are going to get back to normal soon. Sure, I think a lot of people may not be as used to working from home as, as we might be though. Uh, even though you're self-employed, you happen to leave at 6 a.m. to go open the store and to start your day and then the store closes at six and you head home, you make dinner and then, you know, whatever, you may do some paperwork or work on the business, but then you revert to the kids at night and go to bed early. Yeah. Um, and now that we're like, court kind of like, you know, stay at home and do it. There are distractions in the home. Oh, actually, I'm, I'm glad you brought this up. I'll be coming up with another, with another video shortly about how to work from home. Right. On my YouTube channel. And, and there's a lot of tidbits on there that, that people, you know, they think it's all, oh, it's great. I get to stay home and spend time with the kids, play with the dog. I mean, it's it is all great. Cool. Yeah. It, but it's also being organized and, and there's a lot of things people could do that they, they probably don't even know about yet, Absolutely. you know, to, to stay focused. Cause that's the hardest thing. Yeah. It brings, up, it brings up one good point, but just to, to cap on that, uh, on, on the distractions, I don't know how I overcame it. I think I just got too busy because now the distractions are my business and my guitars yeah. are, I have a guitar right behind me. I have one in every room, right? And I have a piano. How many guitars do you have? Um, I have uh, a couple Fenders, a Gibson, uh, Simon Patrick. I have a bass. I think my buddy's got my bass now. But <laughs> the piano, and ukulele, and they're just they're just sitting there. And it's sad because that used to be my distraction. I used to yeah. not be able to get to work because I wanted to play or do other things. And now I'm just I'm, I'm, it just seems like I'm always doing something. But I love it, right? So during yeah. the day. I'm out serving clients and we do operate 24 hours a day. This has allowed me to actually pull back and take a look at our customer service system too, because we want to be there. We want to be available We're yeah, we're there 24 hours a day, but you know, I've dissected my company in the last week just to see that, you know, where we can improve on it. Yeah. And I think that it's fine to hang out with your family. I think you shouldn't. It's, it's great that we're kind of like, you know, we have to, take advantage of the situation however best that we can. Uh, at the same time, don't just sit on it, right? And that's, that's, well, then again, who am I? I don't wanna give anybody advice, we're all different. I don't wanna sit on it because I feel like it's not just, we don't know anything yet. And it's always good to plan and to be prepared. I find it personally as a good time to break things down and reassess how I wanna rebuild it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I was on a conference call with the Ottawa Board of Trade uh, a couple of days ago, and I sit on the SME Council for the for the board. And one of the persons said, "You know, now's a great time to hit the reset button on all your businesses sure. and reevaluate where things are going." And I think that's very, very wise because people get into routine, and even businesses do as well. I mean, for ESACs, I I realized that businesses get stale like years ago, yes. and so every quarter when I hosted these big trade shows, I tried to tweak it up a little bit, do something a bit different to make it fresh and exciting every three months. I mean, not every business has that opportunity, but every so often it's a wise thing to do to sit down. And I think we have a great opportunity now because the phone's not ringing as much. We're not going to the events and you're focused working on the business. 
is so important. Yeah, absolutely. So when I look at that, uh, that change that people look for, I think just, it's just natural that after a while, if you keep going to the same room and the same people, it, it, it feels stale. You know, what more can I say? Um, I was in BNI when I first kind of got going, I guess. It wasn't, it was actually 10 years after I started business. I, I said, I'll try BNI. Really? It was kind of, it was, how, how were you growing your business during that time? Online. Wow. Jared, yeah. you wouldn't believe it, man. In 98, 99, it was literally the, if you build it, they will come. <laughs> and so <laughs> it was, I went through this situation where nobody would hire me straight out of school and it was a dot-com bubble boom and they're like well we're looking for people with two plus years experience and i'm like man i like i, I just came out of school like i need to get experience yeah um and so i grew my business by starting a business uh i also was like you know i was i, uh, I had a job lined up in houston i was gonna go work for a company and it all fell through and i couldn't find a job here locally and i just sort of stumbled into well I was always in business as a kid, and that's what's funny. And I was a musician, touring professionally. Um, and so I just said, you know what? Like, I need to pay my bills. And so I'm just going to go and do something and make money. And it started that way. But literally, we could just build websites back then. And, you know, it was a home run. Sure. <laughs> you know, but we, we had to learn on a competitive level that, you know. And so we started doing that in 2002. And then we started yeah. to do other things. So that's how I built. But in, in uh, 2007, I think, I joined BNI. And I met some great people there and all that. And we're still friends to this day. Like, yeah. very, very good friends. Um, but the room became stale after a while. And I just felt like, you know, I want to network with other mortgage agents or other realtors. So, yeah. I mean, I mean there's so many events out there for so many different yeah, industries and demographics and i encourage people you know if, if you're let's say you're part of the bni or some of the other networking groups around town great try to bounce around go to different chapters meet different people go to different events try the free ones try the paid ones try the executive ones try the you know the green technology the women like all these different events because there's so many out there and one of my favorite things to ask is call up some people you know like and trust and say you know what I've been part of so-and-so for so long. What other events do you recommend? What other events do you think would be worthwhile? I, you know, a couple of years ago, Mitch, people would say to me, Jared, what events are you going to this week? Knowing that I go to a ton of them. And I would send them a note, hey, you know, here, Mitch, these are the events I'm going to this week. And here's the six or 10 of them that I'm going. A few weeks later, somebody else would say, what events are you going to? And I would type, go through my agenda. And it was time consuming. Then I made a, a poster online, like a graphic. I called it Find the Fedora. And I listed all the events and the, the venue and the, who the host was on this little graphic, you know, short little cute branded graphic. And people used it as a resource and it got very busy. And then I put it to video. So I had a little video. Hey, everybody, you know, here's the events I'm going to this week. You find me at, here's a conference, blah, 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 blah. But it got so busy that it kind of fell through the wayside. But offering to help other people find events, it's always worthwhile too, because people want to hear about quality events. I hear you. For the longest time, I was like, where do I find events, right? Mm -hmm. and Facebook came along, and it's all fine and dandy. There's tons of events on there, and there's Meetup, uh, Eventbrite. To this day, people are still going, what events are going on? Yeah, Mitch, because I never thought I had any competition. And that's how I've always approached my businesses, right? For the band, we're the only group, all saxophone band like this. There's other them. bands out there. And for ESACs, yeah, there's other networking events, but I invite them to my events. To me, it's more resources that people could choose to go to or not. I've never considered them competition. I also have a few videos talking about this specific point. And it's just, it's more community engagement for everybody. Actually, you talked about how SACs sells, right? Yeah. And uh, one of my videos, we had um, Ottawa Naturists. I don't know if you ever heard about them. It's it's like a nudist club in Ottawa, oh, and they go and they go to uh, in Chelsea, uh, like in Gatineau Park. There's like the little ruins or whatnot. And like a buddy of mine said, he went out there one time. He said there was a bunch of naked people there. I don't know. Oh, possibly. I mean, I I don't I don't know where they go to, uh, but they had a booth at Isaac's a couple of years ago, and one of the women wore a towel to the event, and she was interviewed by our MC Dylan Black. 
And because of the keywords I use, just in the header, we have over 14,000 hits on YouTube. That's the, the highest amount of traffic I've ever had on my YouTube videos. Even though I have almost 600 other videos about entrepreneurship, that's the one that has the most amount of hits. So go figure. Go figure. Yeah. <laughs> Why? I would love to analyze that for you. Yeah. But yeah, that is so interesting. So Jared, how can people find you online? Um, Google me, J-A-R-R-O-D, and see what pops up. Hopefully some nice things too. But <laughs> I have a personal that's, website. That's how I found you. I was, really? well, not, not, not found you, but I'm like, what's Jared's website again? I can go and I do have your business card. It's stored away. But I'm like, I can go find it. Or you just Google your name. Yeah. Right? And, and, and so that's the first like, thing people oh, do. Yeah. And I mean, especially if you're, if you're planning on doing work with somebody or you, know, you want to check out somebody else's business, you're going to Google the name of the, of the individual or the name of the business. And people look at referrals these days and reviews. Yeah, and absolutely. it's something I've always been very careful with. Like when I first started the band, I, rock, I realized the value of, of whole, the whole online world and how your brand management is really important. It's what people say about you when, when you're not talking to them. And I've been very careful you know, not to post pictures of what I did last summer. Uh, you know, my trips, uh, not that I travel much these days, but uh, if you go on my personal Facebook page, yeah, I'm tapped out of 5,000 friends. Great. But you'll find very little personal stuff about me. It's, 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 I, I tried to make it more like corporate, you know, like more professional. Right. Because I bounce the social medias off one another. So my Sats Appeal Facebook page uh, might like or comment on an ESACS Facebook page or my personal page. And I, and I bounce them around. And I think you get more engagement that way. But how other people can find about me? JaredGoldsmith.ca or .com, same thing, or esax.ca, saxappeal.ca. And to me, it's more community engagement. Get out there, find out uh, how you can help the small business community. Absolutely. You're a master at this. A master. <laughs> and where can people get your esox? I love them. Oh, the esox. Yeah. So you go to the website, fancy fedora socks, and esax.ca. Yeah. And, and it's there. And you, and you can order a pair online. And we raise funds for three charities. We have the, the CHEO, the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario, Ottawa Network for Education, specifically the Junior Achievement Program, and uh, Ability First Ottawa. For every pair sold, Mitch, we, we donate 50 cents to the three charities. But we have two other organizations on board who match our donations. And I'm always looking for other, if you're watching and you want to get involved to, to match this corporate donation, come and contact me and we promote you to help the, more of the community. So currently, $4.50 from every pair goes to these three charities. $4.50 will promote your company. They'll match the donation. Man, it's a no-brainer. It's, it's, it's a win-win for everybody. And they're cool three and socks. That's why I want them. I want yellow. And they are very cool. Actually, once I started making a couple of posts a few months ago, Somebody said to me, uh, you know, I need to order a pair for my husband and I because we, we do a lot of biking in the summer. And you know when you bike, your pants kind of ride up a little bit? Yeah. And they want it to be visible because they're bright yellow. And I thought, wow, I didn't even think about that. That could be a whole other market. <laughs> Very cool. It's like market research just kind of came to your door. You know, you're like, oh, yeah, you know, reflector clothing. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, Jared, last question. If you could see Ottawa in any position, the business community in any position five years from now, where would it be? Uh, a lot more community engagement, I think. People are realizing the value of helping to cross promote and, and encourage each other. And there's, always, there's already a lot of great uh, Facebook groups out there who, who promote different demographics of community. But I'd like to see that working even more. And like, I've always been about inclusion, bringing together people and entrepreneurs and small businesses. I mean, one of the reasons I started ESACS was at the time I started networking, there were five different chambers of commerce within the Ottawa boundary of the city. And entrepreneurs like musicians, you know, there's no boundaries in business. You'll do business anywhere in the world these days. And I thought, let's bring them all together. And I think that's going to be even more important going forward. Hats off to you, Jared. You are a master <laughs> networker and entrepreneur. Thanks so much for joining me, and uh, I look forward to being on your podcast, too. Oh, thank you, Mitch, and, and I'm glad that you still have my, my business card. I do, <laughs> certainly.
Take care, Jared. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye.